It's 10 o'clock. These kids are just hanging out. They're not in trouble, but many teens are doing drugs and committing major crimes. Chances are their parents don't even know where they are. I'm Randy Garcia. I'll explain why teenagers run away and get into trouble, and why their parents often don't know how it happened until it's too late. It's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? Tonight on Channel 2 News Nightcast. Tulsa's 24-hour news source continues. This is Channel 2 News, live at 5. Making way for a turnpike could leave pond wildlife high and dry. Broken Arrow Marines mobilize for duty in the Persian Gulf. And Congress hears suggestions of a possible draft. Welcome to Live at 5 for Wednesday, November 28th. I'm Karen Keith. And I'm Jerry Weber. New federal clean air regulations are beginning to be felt by Tulsa small businesses. Hundreds of people showed up today at a video conference to find out how the Clean Air Act will affect them. The legislation signed two weeks ago will reduce air pollution, toxic emissions, and acid rain. Every small business, from bakeries to dry cleaners, will be forced to comply with tougher restrictions. But they are concerned with the impact on their business, what it will do to their profit, how much money they will have to spend for equipment to comply, uh, what their employment picture is going to be, how it will affect their ability to compete nationally and internationally. The historic clean air legislation will cost close to $25 billion a year, or 24 cents per American a day. A second military unit out of Broken Arrow is now officially on active duty for Operation Desert Shield. And as Channel 2's Brad Rogers reports, this Marine Reserve unit is likely headed for a tour of duty in the Middle East. <laughs> Hugs, kisses, and tears as loved ones said goodbye to Marine Reservists early this morning. But the company first sergeant made sure it was a quick farewell. You people better be in formation at 06. You're mine now! As members of this anti-tank company lined up for roll call, family and friends looked on. Oliver and K. Pierce B. E. On this chilly morning, ears and noses turned red, a contrast to this unit's likely destination, the Saudi desert. I don't know. I don't know if they'll get sent or not, but we know that they're well-trained and that they know what they're doing, so we just got to keep the faith. Yes, <laughs> we will. We'll write letters and lots of packages. Are they going to be okay? It's the main thing we're worried about. We wanted to come home safe. This Marine Reserve unit specializes in firing tow missiles at tanks from the ground. But before these Marines ever get the chance to prove themselves in the Middle East, they must first go through the processing and paperwork required prior to shipping out. Of the 200 Marine Reservists in this unit, 25 will stay behind, primarily the newer ones who've not had a chance to go through any specialized training. But the other 175 Marines, the guys you see behind me, who are now placed on active duty, will ship out for Camp Lejeune in North Carolina on Friday for more intensive training. And from there, who knows? Most think they have a good chance of being deployed to Saudi Arabia sometime around the first of the year. We're ready to be mobilized, but for as far as combat goes, it'll take us a month of intensive training to be ready for combat. And after that, whatever they throw at us, we'll be ready for. At the Reserve Center in Broken Arrow, Brad Rogers, Channel 2 News. The Senate Armed Services Committee today discussed the use of a draft to back up Operation Desert Shield. A former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff told lawmakers that the embargo should be given enough time to work. But he also says the draft could become an option if the Persian Gulf crisis drags on. Also, House Majority Leader Richard Gephardt spoke out against a congressional authorization of the use of force. He is urging President Bush to follow a policy of patient strength. China's foreign minister says his country will not support a U.N. resolution on using force against Iraq. The prime minister left for New York today and would not say if China would abstain from tomorrow's vote. China has the power to veto the measure. The foreign minister will meet with Secretary of State James Baker before the U.N. vote. From Iraq today, a call for talks instead of conflict. Iraq's deputy prime minister says President Bush is leading the entire world to a ruinous war and says Mr. Bush should meet with Saddam Hussein to end the crisis. President Bush says he will not meet with Saddam Hussein until Iraq pulls out of Kuwait. 
The president put his signature on what he calls the most environmentally progressive farm bill ever. Today, President Bush says the five-year, $170 billion package lets farmers make more of their own production decisions based on the market rather than on government support prices. Agricultural officials say that the bill will also help farmers protect water quality and wildlife habitat. Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan says higher oil prices are to blame for a slow economy. High inflation rates have offset increased production. Greenspan also says when fuel costs rise, household budgets tighten up. But he rejects easing consumer interest rates as a solution to the problem. Several Oklahoma financial institutions face an uncertain future. A private report shows four Oklahoma thrifts became insolvent during a three-month period this year. The report says the thrifts were unable to meet capital requirements set by regulators. Progress on the Creek Turnpike goes full steam ahead. At the expense of a South Tulsa pond and the wildlife that lives there. And Channel 2's Michael Riddell is just back from that area. Michael, tell us what's happening to the pond. Jerry, the pond is being drained. Some machinery was brought in that cut into the bank so the water could come out. The draining began yesterday afternoon around 2 o'clock. As you can see from these pictures, the waters fall in quite a bit. In the process, some fish are stranded. People with homes near the pond are very sorry to see it go. While we were out there, we spoke to one neighbor who says the area has lots of fond memories of the time they've spent at the pond, and now they're concerned about the well-being of the animals left there. I hope the ducks are going to fly, uh, fly off. Uh, over at Sheridan Pond and have a new home over there and neighbors will feed them like we have because they enjoy the wildlife like we do and the fish. Uh, we're very sad about the fish because I'm afraid they're going to die if, if they're left here, you know, which if somebody don't come in and take them, they will die shortly, you know, when the water's gone. So that saddens us uh, because my older son has caught some uh, good-sized fish out of here and let them go back for somebody else to enjoy. As the water level falls, it's getting easier to see some of the pond's wildlife. The people there say these little ripples on the surface are fish or turtles. Some of them thought steps would be taken to save the lives of the fish, but according to the Fish and Wildlife Service, it's common in these cases to sacrifice the fish instead of move them because that would take up too much time and also possibly spread diseases from one pond to another. So the fish in the pond right now will die as the water level drops. Michael, what will happen to the fish afterward, and whose job is it to clean up? Well, Jerry, in this case, it's the job of the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. Leaving the fish would cause a hazard there, of course, and an OTA director of technical services says the construction company that's draining the pond will go in afterwards and collect the fish, then they'll be burned in the area where uprooted trees and branches are being taken to. Michael, real quick, how long has that pond been there? I have no idea. We talked to one lady who says uh, neighbors in the area have lived there for at least 12 years and they remember the pond being there, but it might have been around there much longer. Michael, thank, thank you, you for the report. Coming up on Live at 5, a Tulsa woman's wheels keep rolling away with thieves. And teller machine burglars cash in on the holidays. It was Jimmy's fifth birthday. He was finally old enough to understand when I told him how I felt about him. And this year, oh, it's a big year for a kid starting kindergarten and all. My message just had to be special. And that sweet girl from MedEx seemed to understand. She just knew. And Jimmy, well, from the card, he did too. With a MedEx in your neighborhood. I love you, Grandpa. You always know that you can count on us. a powerful green bleaching system that gets socks this dirty brilliantly white and still loves colors. Don't reach for the bleach! Grab a box of the eye! Ox it all! McDonald's value menu. Hot cakes. 
99 cents. Sausage biscuit. 79 cents. Hash brown. 59 cents. McDonald's value menu. Hamburger. 59 cents. Cheeseburger. 69 cents. Side salad. 99 cents. McDonald's value menu. Large fry. 99 cents. Large coffee. 69 cents. Large soft drink. 99 cents. McDonald's value menu. Low fat milkshake. 99 cents. Yogurt sundae. 89 cents. Yogurt cone. 59 cents. And value. More than half a million of us will have our cars stolen or burglarized this holiday season. Just ask Judy Miller of Bixby. She has had her car stolen three times since September, twice in the past month. The latest theft was Tuesday evening. Judy Miller went Christmas shopping at a Tulsa mall. She was gone 30 minutes, and when she returned, no car. Stolen, I mean, after two times before, you don't think, well, maybe I parked it somewhere else. You know right where it is. You know, it's gone. Police found Mrs. Miller's car today. Crooks had stolen the tires, wire wheels, and Christmas gifts. Police say to I mean, deter thieves, in park in well-lighted areas and use anti-theft devices, such as burglar alarms and steering column locks. These are also after more cash during the holidays. Armed robberies are on the increase, and Channel 2's Pete Knutson joins us with more. Pete, when we usually see an increase around this time of year. Well, Karen, police say the number of armed robberies usually begins in October of each year. So far this month, there have been 139. Richard and his girlfriend are among the latest victims. They were surprised when they got back into their car after withdrawing money from this automatic teller on Monday night. Both doors flew open. They stuck in the gun and said, we know you were transferring, give me your money. And that was it. We couldn't argue with them as much as we tried, but when they got a gun, there's nothing you can do. Many of the robberies happen near ATMs. Banks try to make their machines as safe as possible. This one, for example, has glass on three sides, so customers can see if anyone is hiding inside. And ATMs are usually built in places that are well lit at night. Still, police say you should use ATMs only during the day. You should be aware of your it. surroundings. Never use an ATM alone, and wherever you are, don't carry a lot of cash. Police say you should just use common sense. If anything seems suspicious, don't use the ATM. And robbers are just hanging around waiting for you, is that right? They are. This robbery that happened on Monday night, there were five people that were in a car, and obviously they were watching this ATM, waiting for people to go in and get money out of there, and then strike. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Pete. Mm -hmm. A state lawmaker spent the night in jail accused of driving drunk. State Senator Gene Stipe of McAllister was arrested after his car collided with another on I-44 here in Tulsa. No one was injured. No charges have yet been filed. The cable news network wins a censorship battle. Today, a federal judge lifted a ban on broadcasting the tapes of Manuel Noriega's prison phone calls. The judge had ruled that the recordings interfered with Noriega's right to a fair trial. The ban was lifted after defense attorneys withdrew requests to stop the broadcasts. A new era of leadership begins in Britain. 47-year-old John Major is now officially the new Prime Minister of Britain. He will move into the Prime Minister's residence at 10 Downing Street. Queen Elizabeth II confirmed Major today, and the Conservative Party approved him last night. Major defeated Michael Heseltine and Foreign Secretary Douglas Hurd in the race for Prime Minister. Cool days, cold nights. That means fall has officially arrived. Gary Shore has the forecast and today's weather wide. And my question is, what's the difference between hurricanes and tornadoes? It hurts. Sinus pain. Sinus pressure. It really, really hurts. A painkiller alone can't stop it. A decongestant alone can't stop it. Sinutab can. It combines Tylenol's painkiller with Sudafed's decongestant so Sinutab works better than either one alone without any drowsiness. No wonder it's America's number one sinus medicine. It stops the pain. It stops the pressure. Sinutab stops the pain. Hi. Dogs. Hmm? Dogs, right? Dogs, right. Yeah. This is not the form I gave you. This is, is it? another form. This is a form to operate a beauty parlor. Oh, no, no, no. Are you going to do beautifying of dogs? No, 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 no grooming. I stood You're not going to curl a hair or anything? No way. You've done the wrong form. You'll have to take this form now. Oh, dear. The Southwestern Bell Yellow Pages, where people get what they want. This is obviously a commercial for a 91 Nissan truck. So it's obvious that we're going to tell you it's a powerful machine, right? And it's obvious its cargo box is big enough to haul all kinds of weird stuff. 
Hey, it's tough looking. Obviously, we're going to point that out. And see what it's doing there on your TV? That's blatantly obvious. But what isn't so obvious is we're not going to ask you to buy a Nissan truck. We're simply going to ask you to try a Nissan truck. Because once you've tried it, obviously, you'll want to buy it. So try the truck with the most powerful standard engine in its class at your local Nissan dealer. I wish the person who put those tires on the playground had to wash my kids' clothes. So much dirt and tire smut. I gave up until Tied with Bleach. Colors are bright with Tied with Bleach. And those whites? Take a dirty sock. Gets only this white with other detergents, but Tied with Bleach gets it gleaming white. It brings back the brightness and newness. Thanks, Marlene Burgett. If it's got to be clean, it's got to be Tied. The sky is over Tulsa will soon be a lot safer. Federal Aviation Administration officials announced the installation of a new radar today. The five uh, million dollar airport surveillance radar is considered the world's safest system. It will help air traffic controllers get an improved picture of what's flying in the skies. The state-of-the-art radar is the first built in Oklahoma and is among the first in the nation. I know we've done previous stories on this and I guess the question for Gary, will it do anything for weather? It'll certainly help, and of course, the National Weather Service will also be installing uh, Doppler radar right. as well. But the Federal Aviation Administration will have their own set of localized Doppler radars to help them right around the airport centers. Good. And certainly Doppler helps. We've had it here at Channel 2 now for uh, six years and change, and it does help to pick up those strong sure. winds. And boy, the planes sure need to know about that wind shear when they're coming in. No wind shear out there today, though. Let's take a look at the big view across the nation as the storm system moves on towards the east coast, taking its stormy weather with it. Dry, cool, seasonable weather has uh, taken over the central part of the United States and will remain in control pretty much through the weekend, although temperatures will start to moderate some towards the weekend. You can see there goes the storm. Now, this little upper-level system that we've been talking about that would come through today has produced a couple snow flurries aloft in central Oklahoma, but they don't seem to have much chance of reaching the ground. Just a few fair weather clouds, and they seem to be dissipating now as they move our way. So basically just a fair cold night. Now here's the national weather map for you. At uh, the latest hour now, the front is pushing onto the Gulf Coast and up through the eastern states. You can see the radar echoes, a lot of shower and storm activity out along and ahead of that front. Here's the weak little trough coming through Oklahoma, but since it's moving through cool, dry, high pressure, it just doesn't have any moisture to work with. This high will come our way, and uh, so we'll have another cold night tonight, but we'll start a warming trend by tomorrow afternoon. In the local area now, temperatures are mostly in the low 50s close to us, but there are some 40s around, like Ponca City, Enid, and up at Wichita. Off to the east, uh, the cool spot, 40 degrees up at Springfield, Missouri right now, with the exception, of course, the Talamina Drive up at 2,700 feet. It's 36 degrees. In Tulsa now, 52 on the hour, and along with 52 degrees, it's 32% humidity. Northwest wind at 8. Barometer rising now at 30.37. Very strong high pressure building in. The high today of 54 after a morning low of 29. That was our first freeze, and since it did not occur until after midnight, this is the latest we've ever gone in a fall season in Tulsa without having a first freeze. And uh, the former record was set yesterday's date back in 1965, but we'll go on the books at November 28, 1990, the first fall freeze. And uh, looking at the pollen, it was still fairly high, 700 in the moderate range. is down some from yesterday. Pollution is 26. Look for low temperatures tonight around the area to drop into the 20s with the moon pushing full now, 28 for Tulsa, but some low 20s in the colder outlying sections. Highs tomorrow will range from 51 at Miami and 52 at Fayetteville to about 56 degrees for Tulsa. Now here's tonight's weather-wise question one more time. Hi, my name is Emily Clark. I'm nine years old, and my question is, what's the difference between hurricanes and tornadoes? Well, Emily, here's a picture of a tornado. It's a very small, relatively speaking, but extremely violent storm with winds sometimes reaching up to 300 miles an hour. On the other hand, a hurricane is a huge ocean storm. As you can see, this one covers almost the entire Gulf of Mexico. And hurricanes spend their biggest fury as they develop over the warm ocean waters and then hit the coastline with high winds sometimes over a huge area. So where a tornado might be at most a mile or perhaps on the extreme case, two miles wide, hurricanes are 500 to 1,000 miles wide and consist of a giant cluster of thunderstorms that form over the warm ocean and the whole thing spins up. It's just a much, much bigger and more powerful different type of storm. And South Carolina still trying to recover from Hugo. Yeah, that mm -hmm. thing took out more than half the trees in the whole state yep, last year. It really did. Thank you, Gary. 
Well, a power outage in Broken Bow leaves residents in the dark. And that story tops our Nightcast Digest today. Police say three Broken Bow men are in jail in connection with a crime spree that left the town without power. Authorities say the men shot a transformer, causing the blackout. Men are also accused of slashing the tires of three police cars and breaking windows of two business buildings. And Edmond police are searching for vandals who cut trees in front of a dozen homes overnight. Police say the homeowners found the trees cut off when they woke up yesterday, but no one heard or saw anything. The lost trees could cost thousands of dollars. The Oklahoma Democratic Party will pay a $750 fine for filing a late financial report. Democrats were nearly two months late filing the quarterly report, which shows how much money was raised and spent. And an Oklahoma City man is trying to win a district judge's seat over his deceased opponent. Josh Evans lost the race to District Judge Frank Ogden III two months after Ogden died. Uh, Evans' opponent, uh, uh, opponents are asking the court to let the election stand. If that happens, the governor would then appoint the judge from a list of three candidates. Well. Real-life lessons in politics and military action may not be enough for some students. Still ahead, we'll see what happens when students get called to duty in our family report. Hi, I'm Sammy Pagna, here to remind you that there's ballroom dancing tonight and every Wednesday night at the Builders Association at 43rd Street and South Garnett. See you there. Magic 99 has been asking your friends and hundreds of people just like you to tell us exactly what their favorite radio station should sound like. The answers were clear and simple. Their favorite radio station would play great songs from the 60s, 70s, and 80s and the best songs coming out today with a better variety. That's exactly what you'll hear at 99.5 on your FM dial. The only radio station in Tulsa for the right balance of songs with a better variety. Give us a listen and tell your friends about Magic 99. On December 4th is a vote to approve projects chosen by the citizens. Some facts are in order. There will be no new sales tax, just continuation of the present third penny. It's called a temporary tax because voters can end it or continue it every five years. Our city has no other ongoing funding source for capital projects. And for the last 10 years, the third penny has been spent as promised. I'm satisfied that continuing the third penny will be money well spent. When it comes to bread, there's always been a big difference between what I want, delicious, and what mom thinks I need, nutritious. It's a good thing Rainbow is introducing new Iron Kids bread. A bread with all the fiber, iron, and other important nutrients of whole wheat bread, plus the look, feel, and taste of white bread. Sure, mom and I will always have our differences. Nutritious. Delicious. But Iron Kids bread is one thing we both agree on. New Iron Kids bread from Rainbow. Fresh is quite like the real cola taste of Diet Coke. Just one reason, just for the taste of me. With 100% NutraSweet. Hey, where's Boomer? Diet Coke! Guys! Guys! As soldiers get called up to action, the concerns that immediately come to mind are what about family and job security? But as Channel 2's family reporter Denise Brewer tells us, Many of these soldiers are also facing a setback in their education. Hundreds of these soldiers join the reserves to help pay for their college. They're getting called up now just weeks before the end of the semester. Each school is handling the situation differently, and some state officials say that's not satisfactory. They want the Board of Regents to change its policy and give final grades to student soldiers. It's hurry up and wait at the Marine Reserve Unit in Broken Arrow. These soldiers have been called from all walks of life, and many have been called from their books. More than 50 of them were in school until their units received the call. This semester ends in less than three weeks. Sergeant Wayne Welch had warned his instructors of the possibility of his leaving. Most of them were pretty helpful, you know, saying that when I got back, that would help me review, you know, to get ready for my finals and stuff. Um, you know, they, they, were, they were helping out quite a bit. A lot, I also had the option to just withdraw and get a full refund for the semester, but then I would have to start over and take all my classes again from the beginning. And I just really didn't want to do that because it'd take up too much time. The options given most student soldiers are to withdraw from their coursework altogether with a financial refund 
and a W in place of a grade on their transcript, or take an incomplete and finish the coursework when they return from duty, as long as it's within one year. After one year, the I turns to a withdraw. Or instructors can grant the student a final grade, just as though they had completed the entire semester. Be up to the instructor. There are courses uh, in which a student has, has not been asked to uh, perform in order to have a grade that they're, you know, the value of their work really can't be uh, determined at this time. Sergeant Welch agrees. He's an electronic engineer major. One of the classes he's taking an incomplete in is calculus. He thinks it would be unfair to himself if he took a grade early. Every other class I've got is calc based. If I miss those three weeks and just took a grade in that course, it would hurt me in every other course I took from now on. So I really couldn't see him just giving me a grade without me having to finish that part of the semester. But others disagree. Uh, I don't think it's fair if we did get an I. Who's going to be my teacher when I get back? Will the university let me take the I or are they going to give me a W, which it stands. If you don't get an I, it transfers to a W within a year's time. The soldiers could be gone for over a year, but they knew it was a risk they had to take. And for the students, it could have its advantages. It'd be pretty easy classes because I've had most of them already once. Be you know, good for the grade point average, I guess. The current policy is being reviewed by the Board of Regents, and a set of guidelines for all state schools is being created. And the schools say they are working as hard as they can to help these students out. They've even suggested maybe sending tests over to Saudi Arabia. I don't know if they want that or not. Hmm. What about uh, students receiving financial aid? Will they not be penalized for withdrawing? Well, it used to be that if you do withdraw and you're getting financial aid, that's it. You, don't, you can't get it anymore. The federal government says they will be flexible. However, even they don't have a formal policy yet for these cases, and they're having to work on it just like the states are. That's okay. just all of this very unexpected. Yes. Sure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Denise. A broken arrow reserve unit says their fair, final farewell. We'll have that story again in a weather wrap-up when we come back. We're talking to the meat cutters about some of the specialty cuts. I think it's wise at this point to really consult our source reference, the Angus cow chart. Here we see one of our more popular cuts. That's right, it's Butcher's Pride Rump Roast, and it's just $1.59 a pound. And every good roast deserves a little company. How about these skags canned vegetables? They're only 29 cents each. The fillets that we were doing come out of the short loin, sirloin section. It's the inside part of the sirloin and part of the T-bone. Yeah, they're actually bigger than this when they come. Oh, yeah. Out. You get the highway patrol to draw these lines on the cow for you? <laughs> That was then. This is now. The one step from Cane's, the new revolution in coffee brewing. No scooping, no filters, no mess. One step, one easy filter pack so you brew fresh coffee every time. Choose robust, mild, or decaf. One step filter packs, new and only from Cane's. Coffee as easy as one step. Hey, man, you know what it's like cruising with a slice of pizza? All that gooey stuff goes everywhere. But not a new Hardy's pizza pocket, man. Cause it's not a slice. So it doesn't make a mess. It just makes you feel mmm good. See, like the only place that the mozzarella and the mozzarella and pepperoni goes is in your mouth. Not like slices. Hey, Tony, looking good, man. What's happening? Hey, nice decoration, man. <laughs> good stuff. I've got it. Let's go to Walmart and get them all Timex watches. Yeah, Walmart. They always have great prices. Walmart has the season's best prices on everybody's favorite, Timex. The Ironman Triathlon is just $31.96, and the Zulu Time is only $47.96. Sometimes the best gift ideas are right at hand. Overall, you always save more on the gifts you want. Walmart. Always. Some of the stories making news at this hour, China says it will not back a U.N. resolution authorizing the use of force against Iraq. The announcement comes a day before a vote on the measure. China has the power to veto the resolution, but diplomats say they do not expect China to stand in the way. Members of a Broken Arrow Marine Reserve unit said their goodbyes this morning. The anti-tank unit will likely be deployed to Saudi Arabia around the first of the year. And work on the Creek Turnpike leaves the South Tulsa Pond drained and the wildlife in danger. Fish in the pond are dying, but the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority says it does not plan to transplant the fish. 
Overnight low last night was what now? 29. 29. Wow. Will it get lower or about the same time? I'll say 28 for tonight. Not much difference, really. Even though it's starting off warmer tonight, the air is very dry and the winds are light. Yeah. So temperatures should drop rather rapidly. Low 20s in those colder outlying districts again. Uh, one of our weather watchers, Howard Perkins up in Deering, reported even though they had a low of 24, he saved his bell pepper plants last night. So it is possible to do that if you've uh, really wet them down and covered them over. But it will be a pretty solid freeze. When are you bringing those garden goodies? I thought it was today. Well, I think I'll wait and bring them in tomorrow since we were kind of busy today with talking about hurricanes and tornadoes and all that other stuff. We'll do that tomorrow. That's our time. Thanks for being here. We'll be back in 30 minutes.